morning, everybody. Good morning. Good, morning. Good, morning. Good, morning. Good to see you all this morning. Another great turnout. Look. Fantastic, right? This is great. So, sun shining, a beautiful day. Let's start our worship service with 2150 and the faith we sing. 2150 and the faith we sing. Lord be glorified. And on the, uh, on the fourth verse, we'll go to that optional ending where it changes key. And then we'll uh, repeat the slowly the repeat at the end, Marty. Okay. So I'm not worried. We'll see how that happens. <laughs> hey, it doesn't go up too far. It's okay. <laughs> Notice on the sign outside that we've changed Steve's uh, title from worship leader to pastor. The conference is calling him pastor, so we can call him pastor also. That doesn't mean I'm any smarter. <laughs> but I don't have an official uh, or training. Find his classes. Classes. <laughs> I am what I am. I'm a fly by the seat of my pants leader here. So we'll do what we can. We'll follow God's lead. So, uh, yes, thank you for all your support you give me. I appreciate it very much. <laughs> And uh, it's good to see this church growing. Well, You're doing a great job. Well, praise God for that. So, so uh, I would like to uh, put put something out that I need somebody to step up and volunteer for. That's always a that's always an interesting subject, right? <laughs> well, we need somebody to be our our person in the church that sends out cards and things like that to uh, to someone that. Nancy does. Oh, I, yeah. You're doing that already? Yes, I will. Sometimes I need a reminder. Okay. But, oh no. <laughs> so you will be now designated the official sender out. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for that. And uh, we do have a uh, church meeting possibly scheduled for next Sunday, but it's Mother's Day. Um, so if you want to move that to the following Sunday, I'm yeah. open to that. So what, what are your thoughts out there? I Next know. Sunday is it Mother's Day. Mother's Day is the 15th. No. No, it's the 9th. No, it's the 9th. No, it's next Sunday. But you're going to be away, you said, so you won't be here for the meeting if we have it next weekend. Anybody else have an issue with that? 
Let's go the following week. The following? Okay, we'll do that. Mm-hmm. All right, very good. That, that's my cue to sit down. Yeah, <laughs> I think that would be best. Any other announcements? Birthdays, anniversaries. We don't seem to have those. <laughs> Once in a while we have a whole load. May would be a good month to have more on the marriage. <laughs> I don't think we can go back. No. No, it's not. So, um, I have been thinking about something all week since uh, Steve's sermon last week. And since he just said he's kind of a fly by the seat of his pants guy, I figure I can jump in and he'll fly by his pants because I'm going to railroad him. <laughs> um, when you hear a sermon and it sticks with you the entire week and you're thinking and you're adding, you're saying, oh, I know that. Well, what about this? Then I think when something comes up to you that you need to share, your pastor won't mind. Um, he talked about miracles. He talked about being in the right place at the right time. He talked about getting out of your comfort zone. He talked about God placing you somewhere to help people. So a little story. When I was 13 years old, I was at a girlfriend's house playing, fell off a horse, no big deal. You do that. The next day I got sick. The next day I was even sicker. So my parents took me to the hospital. They, I was throwing up. I was having a little trouble breathing. They said, oh, she's got a stomach thing. They did x-rays. Nurse says to the doctor, what's that? Spot. Just a spot on the film. Nothing. Okay. They send me home vomiting out the door <laughs> with a package of suppositories to help that. <laughs> I spent the night on the couch. The next morning, my father gets up to go to work, and I can barely breathe. I said, Dad, I, think, I, I don't think I'm going to make it. <laughs> and he said, that's it. They throw me in the car. They take me down to St. Mary's again. They have to, he has to carry me. I can't even walk. They do another x-ray. Within two hours, I'm in surgery. I had a hole in my esophagus, too. That was the spot on the, on the oh, x-ray. Goodness. By the time this had advanced, uh, a lung collapsed, my stomach wall split, there was acid pouring into my chest cavity. They, broke, they opened me up from the top of my shoulder around to the front and peeled me open like a book. They broke ribs, they moved my stomach, they repaired what they could. The doctor came out to my parents and said, I've done all I can do her chances are about 3%, go to the chapel and pray. Needless to say, it worked. They went to the chapel and prayed, and I am here. That doctor had just gotten to the hospital within the last couple months from Vietnam. He was a mass surgeon, and he did mass surgery on me. Thank God he was there, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. nobody else would have done it. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't have known. Mm-hmm. Fast forward, I'm 16 years old. I was a terror to my poor parents. I had to have wisdom teeth out. My mother insisted that I was going to have it done in the hospital, not in the doctor's office, even though it was going to cost them more money. Off to the hospital they go. They take out the wisdom teeth. I wake up in the, in the recovery room. I open my mouth to say, is it done? And start choking because the doctor had snipped two arteries. When I opened my mouth, they popped. Oh my goodness. I was slowly bleeding to death and choking on my own blood. The nurse sticks gauze on my fingers, stuffs them in my mouth, reaches across to the phone and yells, help, help. Back into surgery I go. I have two clamps in my jaw. So be it. I make good x-rays. I lost half the blood in my body. I'm still here to talk about it. Fast forward again. Uh, I think it was 1990. I'm married. We live in Glen. I work in Fonda. I go to Amsterdam. I stop at the grocery store. I pick up some stuff. I get out. I drive to Tractor Supply. I get out of my car and I said, I don't need anything here. What a waste of my time because the kids are home. I got to do dinner, blah, 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 blah. Back in my car, drive home. Before we got to our road, we went up this really steep hill. 
And as I turn onto this hill, on my side of the road is a car facing me. And the dust is just kind of settling all around in a little smoke. And I pull up, and it's two of the neighbor kids. And I said, what the heck? What are you guys doing? We had an accident. I said, are you all right? We're fine. But we don't know about John. I said, well, where's John? Behind the car. Oh, no. John died. Oh, no. He was dying at that moment. I was, uh, that, he may have already, you know, it was just the end. So I took a car seat out of my car. I covered him up. And I said to the kids, okay, we got to, and before we didn't have cell phones, so you got to go down to the neighbors. They go, what about Malcolm? I go, where is Malcolm? He's across the road in the ditch. So I go across the road, and there lays Malcolm, bleeding profusely from the head. I grab another car seat cover. I push it under Malcolm's head, and he keeps trying to get up. I'm like, no, Malcolm. Now, these are all kids I know. you got to stay down. I send the two other ones down the road to the neighbors who aren't there. So they go to the next neighbors to use the phone to call the fire department, because that's what you do in the country. You call the fire department. And who shows up? It was Sue Summerfield's parents. They're the first ones there. I've known Sue's parents my whole life. Then the fire truck, then the ambulance, then the emergency squad. They slide a backboard under Malcolm, and as they raise him, out flies about a thousand bees. I was holding them on ground bees. Oh, no. oh my gosh. Oh. So now the bees are stinging all of us. You ever get hit with a fire hose? It's an experience. So the fire, you know, they hose us down, get rid of the bees. Off goes Malcolm with probably about a thousand bee stings on his back. Off, they take me because I've gotten stung so many times too. And even if you're not allergic with that many stings, you can probably have a reaction. If I had not stopped at that store, I would have been in the spot where that car landed. I had no reason to stop. None. So I was there, the kids needed me, and I wasn't her. I was in the right spot at the right time, and God planned it all. One more. Crazy life, huh? Mm -hmm. Just just a couple of years ago. I lived up here, still living up here. Actually, first I'm going to say one other thing. I have no idea why I moved up here, really. It, it was just a whole crazy incident. But after I moved up here and started looking through stuff, I found out that my great-great-grandparents were oars. And, <laughs> and with the help of Betty Lou, I realized that you know we're related. My great-grandmother and Betty Lou's grandfather were brother and sister. So, and then she tells me that I also own the property where our family homestead was. So, <laughs> God brought me home. But then I'm going to book club in Glen because I still go there. I love my bookie ladies. And I'm coming home and I slow, I'm talking to my sister on Bluetooth, I'm hands free. And I slow down in Northfield just before you lose reception, just slow so I can finish my conversation. And then say goodbye, and I come around. And where the old Route 30 is, as I'm coming up on that, coming at me on my side of the road, is a very large propane truck mm -hmm. heading right at me. And I'm staring at it and the car on the other side of the road and thinking, where, where do I go? Where do I go? The car pulls over enough. I pull in the middle. We're three abreast at one point. And the truck goes off the road, across old 30 and into the woods. I'd stopped the car, I turned around, I came back and I said to the people, where did it go? I didn't even know where the truck went. They said, it's in the woods. And again, there's no cell service there. So I get, I drive up and get 911 and he's down in and I can't get down there. And I, I'm thinking to myself, you know, I, I'm not a medic, I, I don't do that stuff well. I can, but I'd rather not. So I don't put that. I wait. We yell, hey, hey, no answer. He died. That man died. If I had not slowed down to end the conversation with my sister, <laughs> this story might have had a different ending. So the point of all this is I often, because of these different things that have happened in my life, said to God, well, what, what is your purpose for me? There must be a reason. You keep sparing me. You keep putting me in these places. And I keep looking and asking. 
And I finally come to the conclusion, it's, it's up to him. He's putting me where I need to be. He's putting people in my life that need to be there. And I have to just stop questioning and follow his lead. And I guess that's the message that I got from Steve's sermon last week. Just trust. Just trust and follow. You're where you need to be, when you need to be there. And God's in control. And allow him to be. That's my story. (laughs) Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. So now back to our program here. Our call to worship today is Psalm 22, and you'll find, oh, 22, 25 through 31, and you'll find that on page 753 in your hymnal. I hope I didn't throw you too off, Steve. No, you did good. Thank you. Whoever you are. Whoever I am. (laughs) Whoever I am meant to be. That's it. I'll read the light and you get to read the dark. And we're not singing today. I didn't want to complicate the issue. I appreciate (laughs) that. (laughs) From you comes my praise in the great congregation. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nation shall worship the Lord. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. All who sleep in the earth shall bow down to the Lord. All who go down to the dust shall bow before the Lord, and I shall live for God. I shall serve the Lord. Each generation shall. That's your That's Each generation shall tell of the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn. Our opening prayer is in the bulletin. It's from the UMC Discipleship Organization, Year B. God of the far flung universe and God who is closer than our own heartbeat. We long to dwell in your closeness, abiding in you and you abiding in us. However, the call to abide in other places is strong. To abide in the world of popularity and acceptance or in the world of increasing wealth and power centered around our own wants and desires. Help us turn away from other calls and abide in the place of the heart's deepest desire in your Son, Jesus, and he in us. In Christ we pray. Amen. Your hymn is, Lord, I Want to Be a Christian, and you'll find that on page 402 in your hymnal. Thank you. We can sing this and go home now, Debbie. Just <laughs> thank you, thank you. That's what it's all about. Yeah, I've told Steve before I have absolutely no problem talking in front of people. <laughs> We will go a little further, but that was that was great. So anytime anybody wants to share a testimony, I welcome that. Number 402, Lord, I want to be a Christian.
All right, who's got some praises this morning? Who has some praises? Me. All right. My brother-in-law Chuck is home. Yay! Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Uh, he had his kidney out, and what they found it wasn't a twisted intestine. He actually had developed a hernia. Oh. So they went in. They did whatever they needed to do with the hernia, and he is home, feeling so much better. And we are very happy. That's terrific news. It very is. good. Anybody else? Well, I, 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 I think this is a praise. We had a, uh, yeah, we a memorial too. service yeah. yesterday for Mark Hughes, the young man that passed away. And I've never seen a more beautiful service. Or more well attended. Well attended. Yeah, it was oh. in the pavilion and speculator, which was overflowing. People were outside. It was a great testimony to his life. And we almost froze to death. By his... Uh, by his, his two pastors and, and his brother, who sounded like a pastor. I don't know what the... My, ear, my, my uh, hearing aid's ringing here. <laughs> but uh, his brother sounded like a pastor as well. I don't know if he is or not. But it was, it was a tremendous testimony to a, a man who donated much to the community and his life to God, really. So, praise God. Yes. I thought of saying that. I could decide whether it was a praise or not, but it certainly was. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Yes, Anne. Mine isn't a praise, but I need prayers for my son. Keith is back in Ellis Hospital. Oh dear. It's not good. Let's keep the Aaron family in our prayers. Excuse me? The Aird family in our yes, prayers. Yes, indeed. Yes, the Aird family. And the Hughes family. Mm -hmm. And Bronius, who's gone into uh, rehab. Yeah. So I believe it's Nathan Latour instead of care. I'm not sure. I think so. I think so. And she's a strong woman. So she had fallen and broken her yeah. hip, if you recall. We shared that before. How's Nick at King of the Frosties? He's good. He's working. working. Where is he? Yeah, we cooked, he cooked yeah. my fish last night. All right. Yeah. <laughs> good to hear. Good to hear. And Albany Matt says, the next time you go somewhere, go directly to us, please, if something bothers you. Oh, did he do that? He didn't. No, I mean... But they took him there. Yeah. yeah. For the simple reason that they called and they said, get him down here. We'll make sure everything's all right. Yeah. So... Your eye, is that getting any better? My eye is... Perhaps getting better. Okay. <laughs> I have another appointment in, well, I guess it's next week, so, or not this coming week, but the week after. So, uh, My last visit, he told me it was doing well, it was, things were floating to the bottom, so I, I said, well, then why can't I see any better? <laughs> so, but he tells me it's doing well, so that's, that's good. Praise God. I can still see a little bit cross-eyed sometimes, but... <laughs> But all is well. So, uh, anything else? And yes. I uh, say prayers for my husband. He has two cataract surgeries coming up next week and the week after. Okay, I want to formalize a written prayer list at some point and get these things on it. But I don't want to miss anybody, and I want to get the details. So I would like you to have sh share with me uh, by email, if you would, your prayer concerns um, and uh, who, who it is, of course, who's putting the prayer out. Have, have permission to share, by the way. So not just uh, from anybody, but have permission to share. and. Uh, We'll put down the dates when we started praying, and uh, we'll, we'll continue following with updates and things like that as we go along. So, But let's get it right. Let's do it right. But let's remember all, the, all of our prayers, because we've prayed for a lot of people through, through the times that I've been here, and uh, God has answered all those prayers in one way or another. God answers prayers, and, and testimonies like yours is a good... Good testimony to that. Yeah, that, that was another thing when I was in the hospital with my surgery. My sister called my Aunt Ida, who I have always mentioned. She's the church lady. She was. 
And she got all the prayer chains going. So I am a firm believer in prayer chains. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, prayer's the way. And the more we can get in, out there, the better we are. And if you have an immediate prayer concern, call me or email me, and I will get it out to the rest of the group as, uh, as I do, as best as possible. So uh, you should be known. No, you know where I am, so you, you can find me. Any, any other? Uh, yes. I have one actually from Friday. Um, it fits in with uh, the time and place and everything. My girlfriend in South Carolina, she's 21 years old. We recently found out that she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, she was in a pretty bad accident on Friday afternoon. Um, just so happened, I'm 800 miles north of her, and her grandparents who drive a truck we were rarely home. Um, happened to be in town that day. So they got her there, or got to the scene. She was not hurt. She banged up her hand pretty bad. Her friend had a ruptured spleen. The other lady who was in the accident, um, she has some some minor injuries, but very minor. Everybody's okay and walked away from it. So the fact that there was no immediate red flags with the pregnancy, there's nobody seriously injured. The car was totaled, the other car was totaled, and everybody happened to be there in the right spot at the right time. Mm -hmm. yeah, and if it wasn't for her grandparents, she would have been alone. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? And congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Number four for me and one for her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we have so many praises and so many concerns. And we know you're there for us all, through it all, in the good times and the bad. We do thank you for the praises we've heard this morning. And we, we do thank you for being there and working on those prayer concerns that we've listed that, uh, that are so close to our hearts and so much needed. We thank you for the testimonies that we've had this morning. We come to you now also with major prayers and concerns for our country's situation, for our leaders, for our leaders in the world, for our leaders in this United States of America that was created as one nation under God. We pray for our state and for our local governments. We pray for, our, for, our, for ourselves as leaders and our families. We pray for our schools, that they would teach as you would have them teach, that they, the teachers would teach and the students would learn. And they would learn some respect and some discipline. They would learn true history. They would learn that there's more to life than just having fun, that you're there, Lord, to guide them if they would only listen. We pray that they would learn that in school as well as in our churches. We pray for our leaders in our churches, our pastors, our, our lay leaders, our congregations. We all have a part, Lord. We ask you to be with us all as we uh, try to do our best to listen to you, to do your bidding. We pray for, for our families, those that are closest to us. We pray for ourselves, Lord, for we all have needs. Pray for those unspoken prayers. There are always those needs out there that we don't want to share with others. We know you're working on those as well. We know that you know what they are. We pray for those in this congregation who aren't with us today for whatever reason. We ask you to watch over them. We pray for those all, all online who are watching. We pray for all of your concerns. We don't know exactly what they are, but we know, Lord, that you know what they are. Lord, we give you all the praise and glory for, for it all. Now we come with a prayer that we often 
say together that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You have something for us today, Marty? I do. Except you're going to have to help me. <clears throat> I would suggest maybe that you do not try to sing with me, though, because I don't think you'll quite figure out where I am with some of the... This is by Don Wurtzen. If anybody knows Don Wurtzen, I love the renditions of Don Wurtzen. And uh, he gets a little carried away here and there, and I love it. It's great. So look at, in your hymnal, 128. And the funny thing is, I always think, now, will this fit with everything that's gone on? Well, I think so. It says, he leadeth me. Sure does. Amen. Right. What was that number again, Marty, please? 128. Thank you. Now, if you really are brave, you would sing with me. I don't care. No, <laughs> right. I'll take your word. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs>
haven't uh, done so yet. We have something to add to our collection plate. It's back there in the back. We thank you for that. If you're online, we thank you for sending to Post Office 448, Post Office Box 448, Wells, New York. So if you uh, do that, we thank you for that. If you just, uh, if you will, in prayer or in service or in any other means, that counts too. The Lord loves it. A joyful giver, however, we choose to give, so we thank you for that. Let's uh, share together uh, the uh, doxology, and then we'll pray after that. So. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all Precious Heavenly Father, we do praise you and thank you for what you give us each and every day. We thank you for these beautiful testimonies and these sharing that we've had this morning. We thank you for the gifts that you give us, the way you sustain us with whatever we need, be it monetary or however. Lord, we now we come to you and ask you for your guidance as we try to discern how to use it best in this church, in this community, and in our world. We thank you and praise you for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. I think that's W. Yes. I think it is. She's been here before. I have been here before. <laughs> and I'll be back. <laughs> Our first scripture reading today is Acts 8, 26 through 40. And you will find this on page 1705 and 1706 in your Pew Bible. <clears throat> Philip and the Ethiopian. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an, Uth an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading, Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The eunuch was reading the passage of scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before the shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? for his life was taken from earth. Eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Astus and traveled about preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. Our second reading <coughs> excuse me, is 1 John... 4, 7 through 21, and you'll find that on page 1902 and 1903 in the Pew Bible. God's love and ours. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who 
loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. We know that we live in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he is God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will confidence on the day of judgment. Because in this world we are like him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love dries out, dries out <coughs> fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks. 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 Dear Heavenly Father, your passages today spoke of love. It's something that we all hold dear and try to share. Your message is that we are not only to love you, but to love our brothers. Please, at this time, send that message through Steve so that we can it can be reinforced in us. Good morning, Wells United Methodist Church. <laughs> We're now awake. And hello to you in the sanctuary, and hello to you online. I'm happy to be here another Sunday with you. But you know that opening greeting, what does that remind you of? It reminds me always of the old TV show and movie MASH. Remember Robin Williams would come on and say, Hello, Vietnam! <laughs> and they would say, it's O600. And do you know what the O stands for? Oh my gosh, it's early. Right? <laughs> oh, oh my god, it's early is what he said, I think. <laughs> anyway, he would come on and say that. And I think most of us are familiar with the story, so I won't waste my time on, on the details there. But I guess it had probably a pretty big impact on my life because every once in a while I think about that and when I say good morning to you, that's what's running through my mind sometimes. My mind works in strange ways, as you may know. One thing the storyline did was weave underlying stories into a big picture. The same way it happens in regular life. That story was wrapped around the Vietnam war and the terrible things that happened there, but it was also a lot of funny things that happened on a mass show, if you ever watched it. It's making the best out of bad situations. Little did we know back then, or could we ever have expected the final chapter in Robin Williams' life. He was a very talented performer and comedian. Many say one of the best of all times. What we saw on the outside was far different from what was happening deep inside in Robin Williams' inner self. Robin was both an actor and a comedian. Yes, he was an actor. And that's a deep subject. Some people make a great living about being an actor, being something they're not. Maybe 
some of us, maybe most of us, the times in our lives are actors. Think about it. <coughs> how do we often greet each other? Hello, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. I'm doing great. What's going on underneath, you know? <coughs> what is really there? How do we feel? Often it's really different. Or maybe maybe we try to embellish our story a little bit, make ourselves feel more important or seem more important. You know people that have done that probably. Like a fish story. Fish is always gets bigger as you tell it. <laughs> or maybe you're maybe you're the type of person we know people that are looking for sympathy. You know, they they want you to feel sorry for them. But whatever the case, what's on the surface is sometimes far from what's underneath. Let's admit it, there are always the reasons that we can call, get caught up in acting roles. I don't think anybody is immune to it. I know I'm not. We're all human. Underneath that surface of the actor, comedian Robin Williams was a very different story. He was struggling with severe depression, compounded with a form of dementia, and even the start of Parkinson's disease. So what's under our surface? Today I'm going to talk about being connected and holding on to that connection. Or in other words, being grounded. That is being grounded in, in what we all need, being grounded in God's love and grace. Grounded so that we have that when bad bad things come, bad times come, and they will come, we have something to fall back on and stay out of that depression. We're all grounded to something whether we realize it or not. Take for example our bodies. We're grounded to Earth. The Earth is spinning. If it weren't for gravity, we'd be thrown off. You remember how that old old uh, now banned device in the, mer in the uh, playground used to be, that merry-go-round? <laughs> we weren't grounded to anything on that, were we? If we didn't hold on, you would be thrown off. Sometimes we had to hold on really tight. Now we are older and our playground has changed. Changed location and our games are often more serious than that merry ground experience. Although there were times when that merry ground could be serious too. <laughs> But here we are in the game of life, a kind of roller coaster on a track that is constantly changing. There are high points and low points, dips and curves. Often we may be blindsided by what may be lurking around the bend. There are things that can and will happen that may very well make it impossible to hold on by our own strength. We may find ourselves faced with a situation where, where we are in need of additional support to survive the ride. Along with the wild ride, today's world offers us all kinds of distractions and gadgets to consume our time. There's no argument about the fact that there are a lot of conveniences today that make life interesting and more convenient, more, convenient, more easy. Who would have ever dreamed of all the things that we have available to us? But do they make us connected and grounded better? I'm going to list a few. I'm not going to tell you my opinion. Of course, I have opinions about them all, but you can think about them as I list them. Do they make us closer together or do they pull us further apart? For example, in transportation, we've got automobiles, motorcycles, trains, planes. In communication, we have phones. Regular phones, cell phones, internet, Facebook, Twitter, Skype, FaceTime, Zoom, <laughs> and learning. We now have distance learning, computer, tablet. In our entertainment, we have TV, cell phones, computer, and tablets as well. And in worship, we even have the same. Some people worship totally online. 
Do all those things bring us closer together, or do they pull us apart? Some do, some don't, I think. Definitely some of them are an advantage. There's some of the, some of the, uh, so there's much to be said about the old time just getting together, talking, sitting, having a cup of coffee together, and being real with each other. Let's take a look at what we can glean from today, today's scripture and readings regarding this bond, bonding, this binding and grounding together, this staying connected. For, from our psalm, we see this. God is always there for us. We find that comforting, that fact comforting and reassuring. Psalm 22, verse 26 says, The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise Him. May your hearts live forever. And verses 30 and 31 say, Posterity will serve Him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it. We can take comfort in knowing that. He has done it. He's there to call on, to support us, to calm our fears, and yes, he's there to ground us if we stay connected. Yes, he has done it. The Acts scripture that Debbie read, we heard in, in that scripture, we heard how the apostle Philip was led to the Ethiopian eunuch on the road. It was an unexpected encounter for both parties involved. God provided that call to Philip as he provided a call to Debbie for some situations that she mentioned earlier. Philip came along and the eunuch was reading from Isaiah. I think that's Isaiah 53. We're going to check that out. He was reading about the, the suffering servant there. So you can find that in Isaiah 53. I invite you to check that out later. But this was an action of God's grace being spread to others by a chance encounter. The scripture tells us the Ethiopian went away to rejoicing. Makes me wonder if he continues with that exuberance or if the excitement dwindled. I know it took me a while, a considerable amount of time, to get a handle on the depth and meaning of grace and my understanding it still grows daily. How is it for you? Sometimes an unexpected encounter like this meeting with Phil and the unit can be a powerful moment in life. Think about it. Have you had an unexpected encounter where God spoke to you? or you've had an opportunity to share with others, to have a mutual grounding and bonding. The next scripture that Betty read was from 1 John 4. It talks about abiding in God's love and staying connected. It talks about building on our knowledge of God's grace, connecting and working with others, and sharing that everyday bond of love and grace. Most often, that is just going about our daily lives, but doing so in a way that demonstrates that we are real. We're for real, just being ourselves. It's not going out there preaching at people. It's just going out and being ourselves. It's just being in the company of others and at the same time being connected to the Spirit of God living inside us. It's about showing in a joyful manner without fear that we are sisters and brothers in Christ. It's about being comfortable with ourselves and being bold. Because we have Christ in us, we can be bold. In doing so, we emanate that love to others. Finally, I share here a fourth scripture, as I've done quite a bit lately. This one's from John 15, 1 through 8. The vine and the branches. You've all heard this story. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I also remain in you. 
No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burn. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. I say again here, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself it must remain in the vine, neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. There you have it. There's no beating around the bush. We won't be successful or feel God's love unless we stay connected to Him. And then, the stern warning. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. Here's the reality. God's telling us like it is. We need to stay connected to God, the tree that sustains life and produces the fruit. Let's think about that together. How do we feel about it? Are we fearful? That's quite a warning. If so, we need to reconnect with God, and it's not too late. Let's look at the assurance for that in Scripture. God is the God of second chances. Matthew 18, 21 and 22, Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother and my sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy times seven. God does likewise. That number seven is, is equivalent to infinity, seven times seven. Seven times seven. Jonah. 2, 1 through 3. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of the seas, and the current swirled about me. All your waves and your breakers swept over me. Lamentations 3, 21 through 23. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope, because the Lord's, of the Lord's greatest, great love we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive. You forgive us of our sins and purify us from our unrighteousness. And then the one final scripture to assure us that God gives us another chance. 2 Peter 3 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he's patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So know this. If you've fallen away from the branch, from the vine that we need to connect to, God has not given up on you. On the other hand, know this, from, from verse 7, If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit. Show yourself to be my disciples. God promised, and God does not go back on his promise or his word. 
Our Father is the gardener. He is the tree that gives hope, life, grace, and good fruit. We need to bond with Him and know His love and grace. We need to be careful not to be distracted or discouraged by the many other obstacles to His grace in this world that we talked about. There are many paths available to us. Many, many of those roads are wide and lead to disappointment, failure, and destruction. We need to focus on a road that seems a little more narrow at times, the road that keeps us focused on growing in love and grace, connected to our Heavenly Father and bonding in Him. In doing so, we will also connect and bond to others, showing them what it means to be connected to the vine that gives life. I have no idea whether or not Robin Williams ever had a relationship to Jesus Christ. However, I do know from what I've heard and read that Robin must have been lost in despair and must have lost all hope when he took his own life. Let us not lose hope. Let us stay connected to our Father the gardener and be nourished by his message and his love. Then let us become good fruit that will be the reflection of our gardener, giving hope to others, sharing God's message as we walk through our road of life, like Philip did with the eunuch, but in our own way, just as only we can, being real. Amen. 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 Let's go to 2126, All Who Hunger and Faith We Sing. 2126.
I'll be so glad when we don't have to do all this. <laughs> oh, I have to put a mask on this. <laughs> Oops, not that. Pardon me while we pause for commercial break here. <laughs> There's not one stumbling block we can think of that would separate us from the love of God in Christ. God's grace clears the way for all of us. So let us humbly seek to live in peace and grace with all. Let's, let's uh, join in the prayer of confession next. Let us humbly come before the Lord God, confessing the ways we have sometimes turned away from God's love. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let me remind you that the elements have already been consecrated by our district superintendent, Debbie Earthwell. God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, we come before you with thankful hearts. On the night before Jesus died, he invited his disciples to come to the table and partake of the bread and the cup. Symbols of the new covenant, soon to be written in his blood. They represent to us the body and blood of Christ that was shed for us by the, for, for the forgiveness of sins. On the night Jesus was with his disciples, he left them with this tangible remembrance that we, have that we continue to share to this day. We remember the many acts of Jesus Christ, and we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving, joining with Christ, offering for us, pour out, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, makes one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world as we remember him at the table. In Jesus Christ we name in, in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. So we'll do it as usual. We'll be, uh, I'll be breaking the bread, dipping it into the juice, putting it on the plate, and then I will invite you to come and receive. For those that uh, cannot come forward, we will get it out to you. I'll try to remember this week. I, <laughs> last time I was negligent on that, so we'll work on that. Right. So uh, that's, the, that's the way we will proceed here. And then after you've all received, we'll take it to our seats and we'll partake together. So now sharing from 1 Corinthians 11, 23-26. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. 
do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So now I will invite you to come forward. Father, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Please be with us and direct us. Let us go into the world in the strength of your spirit and give ourselves for others. Let's share, share together what we usually share when we're reading from the book. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. So let's turn now to our final closing songs, 2186.
So that's 21 and 86 in favor. So. He's a laughing bird duck now. And uh, go now and love one another because God, love is from God. Proclaim God's salvation to every generation. And may in Jesus Christ, and like branches of a vine, draw your life from him. And may God, the vine grower, tend you and make you fruitful. May Christ Jesus abide in you and give you life. And may the Holy Spirit cast out all fear and fill you with God's love. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. Well, have a great day and a great week. Enjoy the sunshine. We ran a little bit late today. I'm sorry about that, but it was worth it. Great testimonies. And great, great work by you all. Thanks for sharing. So, there's coffee out there. There's some goodies up there if you can stay.